all right welcome ma back mages of all ages to some more mage wars so today we are playing domination versus cosmos carl oh and he did get this corner huh all right doesn't really matter let me load my deck we are playing the pillion force master in the domination mode which i thought would be fun let's see if it works it does I'm at 119 spellable points. It doesn't really matter. It's fine. Just a quick thing that I threw together, focusing on force constructs for this mode. Because you know they're temporary creatures, but we're playing for points on a timer, and I have a flying force master to get over walls, so we have plenty of walls to set up. It sounds like fun to me. So let's see how it works out. I don't know if this is going to be good, and I haven't played a domination game for more than a year. No worries. So it could be bad. Very common pick for domination mode is uh, Beastmasters with flying uh, focus, and it is a Beastmaster, so it's probably uh, Falcons. It's the common pick. And so I have, and it's a, one of the strongest uh, builds for domination. So that's why I have Gravicore with Wall of Forces to sort of work around that. And we will see if I can make it work. There's a secret passage from here to there. That's kind of interesting. So we could. I wonder if he's just going to go for face. He can. We can. He can run through here, come up there, and hit the mage in the first turn. That'd be kind of interesting. I have a battle forge that I will be putting down. And I forget what this one does, Septagram. Uh, I kind of remember, but I don't 100%. Either way, we have lots of trickery and stuff in here that we will attempt to use. I don't need these regrowth bells. There's definitely some optimizations that I should do if we wanted to make this a serious domination book. Probably even more creatures. It doesn't look like much here. But it's going to be fine. So in the first round, we are going to put down the... Battle Forge, and what we are trying to do is in the second round we want to attack and kill a slack and then take an orb. We want to try to get an orb in turn two. So in the first round, I'm not sure. Maybe read is deprived power. Yeah. I have a plan. I should have worked this out in my mind uh, ahead of time. Uh Welcome and good luck. Have fun. So, Sot is here. Good stuff. And we should move towards the Vitorax. So, I think I'm moving here, putting my Battle Forge in there. And then we will try to conquer this slack early on. All right, it's close to the Secret Passage, so maybe not. We'll see. Sot never played Domination, really. Okay. It's fun. It is really fun. Is it more fun than the arena mode? No, but I have played so much arena, you know, you gotta have some variety at some point, so this is why we're doing it this way. Uh, this is another way to experience Mage Wars, which I really like. Zoom in a bit more, like this, because it gets a bit small and a bit big at the same time. Oh yeah, and there's another game between Knapp and Power ongoing at the moment, but well, we are missing out on that in favor of playing ourselves. And that's fine. Actions phase. So, Cosmos Alive has the first uh, action here. And he is deploying a lair in the secret passage. No, in the corner. I think that's a mistake. You want to put it forward in the fighting area. So it deploys on top of Slack and Orbs. If you deployed it here, like, no, not cast, cause it, but if you deploy creatures here, you have fast creatures that can reach every orb on the board. From here, you can only reach three of them. The danger, of course, would be that I can go and attack them, but I could just run through here if I really wanted to put the battle force down here and start attacking. That's not my battle plan, though. That's not what we're doing. I like to play for the orbs when I play Domination. So I think he's done. Oh, yeah, we don't have... Ah, right. Yeah, that was what I meant. So we are not playing on the playtest 
mode currently because you can't play domination in the playtest mode that is currently on octagon so that's why i was trying to make that work and it doesn't so we need to play domination mode but then just adjust some rules like the 10 channeling rule is not effective in this mode currently but of course we're playing with it so yeah like that and then i will enchant myself here good and i think i can capture an orb in turn two here if i have thought it out correctly but i'll try to voice it next turn here this is the end of this round all right and so we're in the second round here um he didn't even see the secret passages until now so that's kind of interesting uh end of the deployment so in my initiative i will deploy the heart of graphic core this was a tough choice like the um uh, shifatar can sweep you know and hit orbs and a thing so that's kind of cool uh making it a uh a living weapon uh put a ready marker on it i guess like that to indicate that and we will summon a creature and make it ready in this turn with a prepared mind and then we will go and hit a slug with the redistributed power and the heart of gravico hoping to kill it and then uh the force phoenix will go and grab the orb if that works so let's see if it does thanks so this is just this is my uh paleon force master that you might have seen before just reworked for domination and like i said it needs some more changes to be perfect but it's it's decent i think uh first quick cast phase None of that. All right, so then I do have to do it now. We will cast the Force Phoenix here. Go point to this thing, pay two mana because that's the level of the creature to uh, use prepared mind, may panic mana equal to the creature's level to enter pay active, make it ready. Then we will go and attack. Oh no, then we will reveal, redistribute power for zero. Uh, paying two dissipate tokens from the force phoenix like so then move over and attack now with redistributed power that's six dice i think yes we get six dice with though five five with the basic melee and we have to wait what okay he's asking wait how okay so i'm doing the attack and then we will explain if he needs to Four is unfortunately a bit low. It will retaliate. Only dealing one. How? What? Does it have two armor? Only one, huh? And I rolled four, yeah, okay. Unfortunate. So it looks like we're not going to be able to kill the Heart of Grass. Oh, sorry, the, the Slack this turn. How did you cast a creature? Then NQC, then, 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 then QC, then move and melee and attack. QC, creature, and then move and attack. It's a quick cast. Yeah, it has a lightning bolt. Now we're using the Heart of Gravico. Mighty Bash. Does this one benefit from... Mm, no, it should not benefit from my uh redistributed power i think wait no I'm not sure if i get melee plus on hammer let me go check and i will pause the recording here all right of course it doesn't get the melee plus i'm just um and I, I wouldn't expect it to it's just when we check here it looks like the automation thing so and then i will need to double check so instead we will roll so manual and here we go with four dice
up to seven. So one one damage away from killing it in one blow. I think we, on average, we would have gotten it, but we didn't. So that's kind of sad. It is what it is. We will say done and end the round here. <clears throat> then, of course, the Force Phoenix can go and finish off the slack, and then hopefully he doesn't steal the ore from under me, but he could. But then we will stand our ground and fight in that zone over that orb for as long as it takes. Either way, I should still be able to grab an orb before him next turn. He's doing a little build up, which is not how you want to play domination, in my opinion. So let's see if he doubles down on that. Quick casts the Man of Flower and moves up to this Vital Orb. All right. The beasts comes out. Okay, another weird play, but maybe he wants to cast more creatures from the mage. Then you would have played the straight wood beast master. So got a lot of critique from Mister Cosmos here, but of course I don't know exactly what his plan is yet. Um, I think you got to rush orbs usually in this mode, but maybe he knows what he's doing. Apparently he has played it before, so not entirely green, and. <laughs> Not, no pun intended, because he's playing the player green here. Uh, he, uh, oh, sorry, uh, the Voice Phoenix finishes off my slack here, and then he has a move. He could try to steal my orb, but he doesn't. Okay, if he, if the uh, Wicked Fairy move one, two ended up here, it could go in and steal the orb. And on orb activation, you get two mana as a burst thing. So that's why that's kind of nice to to steal orb activations. But uh, maybe. We can do it to him next turn. We'll see. And this is the end of this round. All right, we have arrived in the deployment phase here. Oh, Pharaoh Cheetah. <laughs> it's kind of funny because I build a Jokhari Beastmaster as well for my secondary book if we're playing it second game. And it has Thunder with Falcons, Pharaoh Cheetah Lair, and a Rayquard Fairy as well. Just not a Man of Flower, and it would be a bit more aggressive, no Ring of Beasts. Because you want to use the mage to attack, not summon creatures, in my opinion. But we'll see. And uh, so it's kind of funny that he went for sort of the same style. But it is really strong. A Beastmaster in domination. Force Ring. Now that I'm criticizing all the build-up on his side, let's do some on our own side and criticize ourselves. I do think the Force Ring will end up paying off. Uh, the other play would be some armor. But I'm not super scared of being attacked right now. So I think we get away with this. And then the first quick cast phase, he says no quick cast. I will scare him a bit by casting my force sentry down here. He might not realize what that is yet. It's a very common play though in domination mode for, for any class to use the Vita force sentries. And of course, since we are a mind mage, they are better. Hidden enchant, yes. And I did remember to play upkeep for my uh, my heart of Gravicore, which is something I almost forgot, so good on me. Often forget, and it's not ma um, automated at all, so it is something to keep in mind. Uh, the You are hindered, sir. Yeah, I was thinking there's no way he can get to my orb. So he, I don't have a bit to be afraid because he is hindered. So he didn't realize that and therefore he thought he could steal my orb. All right. Good for me. <laughs> uh, yeah. He says unscrewed. I didn't bring a proper area attack though. I realized this a little, uh, just um, doing this. Mind if I switch bell? Sure. Uh, yeah, so I, I would need to bring in an area attack of two because they are really good in domination and I didn't do anything like that. I do have uh, force wave and I think cascading force wave. And did I bring the repulse? I did not bring repulse. Okay. Mm. But that, that would be about it. Oh, and then I did include a... Uh, mass cowardice, which I think is really cool. Uh, inspired by... Knapmaster. So now he's going to do elusive on himself and then go and take the orb. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, when can I do this? Once before, before or after friendly creatures action phase, you may push. Yeah. All right. So he's going to get the burst of mana for that.
it should automate it once he does the attack roll here. Yeah, asserts control, indicating control using a green control marker, and then he would gain two mana, which I think is automated. Yes, he does get it automatically. Good. I mean, I'm just going to take it back, so it's not a huge deal. Uh, and then I'm going to punch his mage, because now he is exposing himself here. So... Oh, did I want to cast the Psionic Cobra then? Hmm. It's a Psionic Cobra or two... Or five dice on his mage, right? So... Ha ha ha. Done, he says. Uh, uh, one, two, one, two. I cannot pass. Let's see if this is still automated. No legal attacks detected. No, it's not. Putting that back on his thing. Done. I think doing this Ionic Cobra is the right play. He is attacking a slack over here. Dealing two damage to it and then getting counterstruck. Good chance that the slack will actually win that little duel if it's just those two and it does kill the bird in one swing. Yeah. You don't want to be taking the counter strikes on your falcons. Another lesson learned there. And it, the slack is currently healing from the Zamandria circle. <laughs> Cosmos Alive is surprised. It happens so you shouldn't do that and it happens more than you might think well i will move down here i will cast the psionic cobra for one less mana because of the ring then make it active with the thing so paying one mana and then my hammer will punch or be thrown at him. Returning throw. Yes. One damage and no other effects. All right. And I feel like I'm forgetting something. No, everything is fine. Done. Bookwood Fairy will move up and try to Again, hindered. It is not elusive and it is not flying. So maybe uh, Cosmos Cal has not played as much domination as I thought. It seemed like he was very interested in it and experienced in it. Attacking this Ionic Cobra is not really worth it in my opinion, but oh, he does get a 2 damage on it. It only has 4 health, so maybe it was. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, because it's... Oh, he doesn't even have ages at all. Huh. You can just attack this thing. Hmm. Did you, in did you include mages in the water thingy? No. Because this uh, thing gives ward to no non-mages. Uh, so... Uh, it it would not have done anything there. And then add Marcus here. A control. Add 10 Marcus here. Marcus there. And then we will put a marker over there like that. Done. End of the round, so I should get a a, a a Vita automatically here. Let's see if that works. I'm gonna let it run into the upkeep phase here, so we can see if it automates. I will pay for my living weapon, and upkeep to see if Vita autos. All right, we'll hang it, let it hang in, uh, in the area until he follows up. There we go. I think it's 
doing the thing. And got some upkeep anyway. I did not automatically gain a VTAR, unfortunate. Oh, so VTAR, you go in here, filter, VTAR. Gaining one mana or one healing per Vita gained. So two, one mana gained. And then that is the uh, end of that previous round. So now we will go into planning and I will cut this out. All right. And we are ready with the next round here. Let's see. Got people writing to me in Steam there. Uh, and deployment phase. So I have initiative. I will deploy the Hectors of Status, Status this turn because then we will keep the Force Phoenix for longer. I might want to have a backup of this one and I don't need a leather helmet. So another thing to adjust, but for later. Let's see what he does here. I'm getting another Falcon or another Cheetah. Both are good here. I put a lot of rats in my book, my uh, Beastmaster. So, what's it gonna be? A Falcon, all right. I will reveal the Vita for Sentry right now, so it cannot be Seeking Dispelled. First quick cast phase for Vita for Sentry revealed, and I'm not quick casting. Is he going to quick cast? No. All right, then I will use the Vita Force Sentry to push the Wigwood Fairy one zone to the right so that it cannot interfere with my Vita Orb this round. Like so, indeed. Then that was an interrupt kind of thing. Mm -mm -mm. Then I don't really know what else I want to do this round, to be honest. Uh, I think the Force Phoenix should attack Let's see, one, I can't pause, or I pass now. One, two, three, yeah, hmm. Ah, oh, man, okay. Uh, yeah, no, I will just punch him with my Force Phoenix, dealing some damage. Ooh, four this time. Okay, so we're making up for the bad roll last turn. Putting him at five. At some point, the mage is, needs to be a little scared. The Wigwood Fairy is activating. He redecides, okay. Hmm. <laughs> Always tricky. Beastmaster is activating. With the quick cast token instead. And he's quick casting something on himself, which he can do even in the water zone because it only boards non mage creatures, non mage objects. So the Battle Forge is warded too, by the way. Pay three mana for Lion Savagery. Okay, and he's going to go and attack me then. No. Oh, he's not hindered. I was about to say, hey, you are hindered. <laughs> no, he's not. Okay, good. So he abandons my orb up here. And he will be counterstruck by the slack here. Doing one damage to him. He did not manage to kill in that action yet either. So, and then he cannot end up with the orb this round. I will take it if he opens it up. So... Kind of scary for him, I think. Uh, I do not want to move my Astyonic Cobra down here. Let me go and check real quick how to sacrifice stuff on the Vatorek. That is my bad. This is not the sacrificial order where you can gain Vita for sacrificing creatures. This is where you can summon uh, Slacks. 
by paying mana and vitar so i could do that in the deployment phase if i control the zone which i do but that's not what i want to do so yeah uh, i will may move uh, the psionic cobra over here and guard and done We could fairy goes and punches me, all right. Dealing one damage. Now the question is, do I want to go into that Samandria's circle and just attack him? I think I do. And then we could summon the Force Gremlin at the end of the round. After my action, leaving me with the final hit in case he wants to open up for the orb. Uh, I'm going to hit him with a lot of dice. I'm going to be hit by the Pharaoh's Cheetah though, so with mm, four, not that bad. And he will be hit by five, then four. So I think hitting him is worth a little bit more. I will be able to deploy armor and he will not. So I will go for it. Come over here, punch him. With basic melee, five dice. Ceiling one, god damn it. And then uh, we will do Heart of Gravicor, targeting you, four dice. Dealing five, nice. I might have wanted to do the, the ranged one here just to hope for a slam. That would have been nice, but we didn't. And then quick cast the. Mm, Could be the Altar of the Iron Guard as well. Both are good here. Hmm. He has initiative next turn, so we'll take the orb if he opens it up. It's tricky here. I do need more Gremlins out, but I already used the ring this turn, so that kind of makes me not want to do it. The Altar of the Iron Guard will be really good going forward. So I will put that down here. He might just attack it instead, and that's fine. I, did, I didn't need to quick cast that right now then. That's my bad. If that's what I wanted to do. So, damn. Interesting choice, he says. Yeah, thanks, I guess. Arrow Cheetah comes over. going for this luck. All right. Would be hilarious if he doesn't get it. He does get it. <laughs> but only barely. All right. End of the round. And we're in deployment phase. So let's see. He has initiative. There is a Darkfin Asp coming out of the layer interesting and then a symbiotic orb for me should be nice we are deploying or casting a tomb guardian this turn and then i have a vita force entry that i don't think i will use but who knows first quick cast phase is his he's at 11 damage i'm at one there must be an armor coming at some point here yeah okay ah yeah this one i also used in my version so of course it's really good you can get both guards and um do attacks at the same time with the beastmaster here for the pack leader's cow very cool and i can't steal equipment on that one all right i will do the vita or sorry tomb guardian here for not eight right no plus one i'm not sure why i didn't recognize that is a Force ring thing. Interesting. Yeah, it should be. And a quick action. Ex exactly, yeah. Yeah. And of course, I will pay to make it active this round as well. So then two mana to make it active. And it gets a guard token in the same round as well. 
all the things, and then done. Uh, actions phase is starting. Beastmaster is activating. Doing a quick action first, it seems. No, he already did that. Okay. Quicker Fairy is activating. Moving over to grab the Vita Orb. Oh, it can't. It doesn't have elusive. So it will attack into the guard. Yeah, that's fine. Rolling one die. Dealing two damage, nice. Sonic Blade will retaliate. There's a chance that we kill the thing. That would be nice. That's actually a really annoying creature. I do have a knockdown that I'm, I'm looking at maybe killing the Wicked Fairy. Uh, it, it ignoring the ages is kind of annoying. So yeah. So when you attack in the zone with the orb, Please ask if I want to use it, because it is not auto. And that's um, I didn't want to. I didn't want for that attack. For that attack, though. Yeah, so that out of the way, we will mm -hmm, probably just grab the orb. As he, he, I can grab the orb, then he can grab the orb, then I can grab the orb, then he can grab the orb. I think I will end up with the orb here. At least that's the theory. So I don't know what else to say about this round here. Let me think, let me think. We can... It's a ready marker. Ready is the ready marker, yeah, okay. Um, mm, mm, mm. The psionic copra will go in and activate the orb. We should definitely do it because we get two mana for being the first one to hit it. Gains you mana. Done. Kitchen asserts control over the Vita Orb. Indeed. So the Pharaoh's Cheetah is attacking the Orb. It is not a friendly creature. So I cannot use the orb to deny that attack. Friendly object. Oh, friendly object. I could defend a fort with this as well, I see. It's not a friendly object either. It's not a, my object in any sense of form or fashion. It's just an orb that I control. Or no, not either. I don't believe so. That might be incorrect, but I wouldn't know that to be the fact then. Correct. Oh, this is a proper control marker. For some reason, it's different from the other one. So let's use these instead. Apparently, they are different. Maybe they're not, but let's see if they are. Good. 
and he is done so i will let's see we will attack with the tomb guardian getting it back then using a uh, when you remove a dissipation from two guardian to give it a guard when, one once per round when you have priority done so he still has elusive here of course and can take it back and gain a guard in the same action but he won't be able to assert control or, or on it after the fact at least so that's nice oh and i can push out the guard so i will end up with the control then yes He's now is spending action marker, summons Etikaran Porcupine. Oh, so I will end up with the control already. Interesting. Yeah. Etikaran Porcupine. Very cool. All right. Target's Ring of Beasts. Yeah, so he would gain. Yeah, he already got that bonus. Target's Ring of Beasts. Target's Ring of Beasts. Okay. or control r is not working it already did the discount <laughs> well don't worry about it any targets packed with a scout to give it a guard marker interesting since i have control over the orb you know he's guarding hmm okay well he used the ring for once so that's cool one more and it will have paid off i guess except for the action cost i will send the force phoenix down here to guard Let's say done. It's going to end up to, uh, getting destroyed at the end of the round, but who cares? Now it's guarding here. Currently, I'm gaining two VTAR, which pays for the upkeep of my hard graphic core at least. Ooh, you should not put your bird there. Yeah, okay. If he puts the bird here, we will push it into the wall with the VTAR force entry. Oh, we could do that with the Vicward Fairy to kill it. I see. And he attacks into. Okay, I'm using the orb. No, all right. I was pointing to it, so we will do it here. Using an orb from this guy there. There, three dice. Yep. One dice block is one dice blocked. I'll take it, and we do three dice back. All right. So we could also push the fun thunder with Falcon out so that it doesn't heal. But I think killing the Vicud Fairy for free is better. This one getting pushed in that direction. And I have my Force Master still remaining here. We could punch the Porcupine. Which I don't think is a waste necessarily. What did I have here? Vita Force Entry again, right? Hmm. With four mana. I would have punched his mage right now, but maybe we just guard. I could just guard. Guard and then use the Heart of Gravicor to attack the bird the flying attack of course or ranged attack returning throw 85 percent kill chance here got it i would have one shot it all right and that would be the end of the round 
and in the deployment phase. So I'm not deploying anything. It's a bluff. But I, I was thinking about the chaussees. But I don't think I should spend mana right now. We don't have a lot. I reanimated the Force Phoenix, of course. So we are low. Uh, but otherwise, I think we're doing fairly well. Uh, we got Confusion and Force Gremlin in hand. We'll see how it goes. Quick Hood Hound coming out. Also a good creature, of course. Five mana is not too shabby for a good creature. Um, you need more than one for them to be real good, though. So we'll see if he can get around to it. First quick cast phase. I am not quick casting. And he did not quick cast either. All right, so then Vita for Sentry will push the Wicked Fairy into the wall. Bash. Killing it. Nice. Then we need to act with something. And I was thinking we would move the Psionic Cobra out. Do not lose it this round. Just move it like over here. Done. <laughs> All right. Bye bye, little friend, he says. Oh. Yeah, I mean, the little fairy. I would say it never harmed anyone, but it kind of did, you know. It, it it harmed my psionic cobra. By the way, I take damage in this Amandria's circle. That's why there's extra damage on my force creatures here. So we don't really want to be fighting in this zone, to be fair. But, uh, I mean, right now I'm getting all the Vitar out of it. So it's kind of fine. And we're killing his stuff. There's a timer on all my stuff. So, yeah. The long, we're playing for 14 Vita point here. I should have let you guys know that earlier, by the way. And um, th it's far away, to be fair. Uh, he's going through the secret passage with the Dark Fan Asp, trying to go for my Vita orb up here. The Zionic Copa will guard that next turn, so it's going to be fine. He's got one, two, three creatures, and I have one, two. So we can pass. And we will pass. And see what happens. If we can take the fight away from this Amandria's circle and up here to the water zone, I'm all for it. So yeah, by all means. Faro's Cheetah is being targeted by a card. Might be an elusive my Mongo's agility, of course. Again, seems reasonable. It's activating. Pays one mana for Panther Stealth. Ooh, even better, of course. Yeah. So it goes up here to the Vita Orb and grabs that. Yep. And he's done. All right. Uh, I can grab it back in this round if we really want to with the force grambling, at least make it sure make it so that he doesn't get it. Um, meanwhile, I'm unsure what I want to do with my action here. I want to keep my guard, obviously. So what are we doing with the tomb guardian is the question. Hmm. I don't want to waste its actions. It's going to counter-strike with one die here. It doesn't really matter. So maybe we just punch into it. I could also just guard here with it. Instead. Because punching the Atticarian Porcupine who will regenerate from the Samantha Circle doesn't seem super interesting. So I will guard with it. And say done. I'm betting his mage will run up and grab the orb. 
in which case the force gremlin will be required in order to bring it back under uh, new neutrality at least. Did you somehow add dissipate tokens to the Guardian? Force Phoenix will do that. Indeed, when it dies it, or it is destroyed, before it reanimates it will gain uh, add two dim dissipate tokens to a different creature. My only regret is not having more Tomb Guardians and Force Gotems in the deck. Uh, we are going to run out before the 14 turn timer or 14 retard timer. I need like two more Tomb Guardians, I think. And that is going to be bad. So, hmm, hmm, hmm. Not sure what we can do about it, though. Beastmaster will now run away. Yeah, and I was thinking about dispelling one of the elusiveness here, but he's gonna have more, so it's a question of is that really worth it? Is there gonna be enchantments out that are more pertinent to get rid of? Questions that we need to answer and think about. He says, hmm, all right. Well, if he goes over there, he's not gonna be regenerating anymore, and that's kind of nice. He does have one armor. Uh, he he goes back. Okay. Porcupine's now activating. And we'll move over and punch the Psionic Cobra. I see. Dealing one damage, which is enough. And I didn't guard with it. That was a mistake. It doesn't matter in the end, because it died. <laughs> now we can punch it. And it's not going to regenerate here. Five dice on this creature seems fairly decent. I could also just punch his mage. In fact, if I go like this, remove the guard, and then punch his creature with the basic melee, Dealing low damage, that's, that happens. Then we will use the Heart of Gravicor to smack his mage, hoping for the slam. Not sure why he is retaliating. Oh, does it have Counter-Strike? It has Counter-Strike, the Counter-Strike trait, right. I, I always forget, it's, just, it's so rare that we see the Counter-Strike ability. Uh, yeah. Uh... First two, and then one more. Okay, yeah, I forgot it had the Counter-Strike trait. That's fine. And then we will do the thing here with the hammer. And the slam slam can make him not able to hit on an orb. That would be nice. We do not get the slam token, but we do do two damage to him. We'll say, uh, then quick cast. That's important to do now. Uh, Force Gremlin coming in for two mana, yep. Then one mana to make it active, and then we can grab whatever orb that he's trying to hit here at the end of the round. Done. And it's guarding, technically. Not that that matters. Yeah, that's nice, yeah. Thank you. Yes. Oh, oh, he's going for the Altar of the Iron Guard. Oh, that that I would consider misplay here. It, the Altar of the Iron Guard does not do that much for me. But whatever, he got rid of it. I have like one... One creature more that, that it matters on. So it's kind of a misplay for me to even have it in the book. I kind of regretted it. But eh. And then at the end of the round here, I will go and grab this orb. Gaining two Vitar again. He could have taken one Vitar away from me here instead of hitting the altar. So, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, there's a guard, but he was elusive. Right. So, end of the round. Yes. And we're in deployment. Uh, he is not deploying. Oh, he is, yeah. 
He might be. Uh, yep. We're ready. Another Wickwood Hound. I'm putting out Galvitano, so still getting some more of my, my stuff onto the board. We can hit his mate much harder now, which I'm excited for. Vita, Force Sentry, and Confusion in hand. And he's adding the tokens here. I would worry about those later when they when they are relevant, because otherwise you have to gonna, you're gonna have to remove them and add them all the time, which I thought find annoying personally. But it's up to him what he wants to do, of course. Just giving some advice here. First quick cast phase. He has initiative. And we want to put the Vita Force Center turn down earlier. As, as soon as I have priority, and if the Dark Fin Asp hasn't moved yet, put that down here push the asp into the wall and try to kill it like we did with the fairy should be fun uh, i'm not sure if i can water, uh, put an enchantment on this zone we'll find out uh when we come to that point so he's activating the atticaran porcupine first yeah so i might get away with it i'm gonna have to go and check as soon as he's done acting here i wonder if it's automated this if i just allow it to happen no Oh, he removed it for me. Okay, good. Yep, and then he should say done, but he might have a quick cast here. There's the done. All right, I'll go and check if I can put this Visa Force entry in this zone. All right, uh, you guys can read the debate here. And the, the problem is the zone is warded. What it says, enemies cannot enchant it. What does that really mean for a zone and I an enemy of the zone? So on and so forth. Thinking. Uh, let me do that little combination here. I'm thinking. Uh, yeah. We are concluding that no, I cannot do the thing. Cause, and then uh, Confusion was going on this Pharaoh's Cheetah, and the Visa Force Hunter was going on the Central Grand Zone, and I can do neither now, so I can't cast any spells, uh, which is not good. Uh, so we are thinking, we are thinking. That was not what I expected out of this turn. I can push myself over into this luck and double strike it with Galvitar and then try to capture the orb. I can also win this orb, I think. Yeah, I can win that orb. So I'll just do that for now. Done. See what he does. He's got two more creatures on it, but I have one more creature and then myself. He's got his mage. But then I win this orb at least. I'm kind of hoping that this Pharaoh's Shield will ch charge down here then, so it, I can enchant it, but let's see what it, what he does here. Okay, he's moving up there with the mage. All right. I can push my Tomb Guardian over here and get up and take the orb. Yep, he did the thing. Good. No regen for him then, at that point. That's nice. Was my orb. Oh, and then he is doing the Pactylus Cowl to give the Etikaran Porcupine a guard token. Interesting. Yeah. Ah, so then I shouldn't have used my invisible creature first. He's still got two more on it. He's doing a quick cast action two. Casting a an alluring orchid in that zone. I see. Okay, I have that one in my Beastmaster too, of course, because this one's great. Declares non counter strike attack. It must target a luring orchid with an enemy minor creature. Yeah, we can't get rot tokens on our dudes anyway, but that is, of course, annoying. Pharaoh's cheetah is going to come down here, I think, and grab this orb. So we might just allow that. I'm thinking, do we go for this orb over here, this guardian here? I could push myself over, double strike it, harder gravity cord, then take it with fourth phoenix. Then he can't take both orbs from me either. Yeah, 
Yeah, thinking again. Um, ba -bum, ba -bum, bum 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 and Force Phoenix can grab one of them back. This one has a chance here. I think I will do this. It's a decent play. Uh, no. Target enemy creature. Oh, I cannot. Enemy only. Right, right, right. Good thing that I checked. Hmm. I could just move down or move over. It has one armor, so piercing. We will hit with six dice. And then the Heart of Gravity Core, fairly good odds of killing it. Um, yeah. And then I would grab it with the Force Phoenix. I think we do it. So this seems is it six dice? Yeah, six dice with thrust here. Nine damage. Okay, so I got it in one, which is not great because now I, I, there's nothing for me to use the heart of gravicor on at that point, so it doesn't do anything. So it wasn't necessary. But whatever he says, wow, yeah, that'll happen. Done. Now he can go and grab it, of course, with the cheetah. But that's good. Then we will give it the confusion. Yes, perfect. And I will make it neutral after the fact, at least, so he doesn't get any orbs out of it, and we still get one Vita for the round. I could have passed. I should have passed then, of course. Uh, no, I couldn't. Two active creatures, and I have two active creatures. I cannot pass. Okay. Come over here. Done. And the Wickwood Hound moves up here into that zone, yep. He's doing all the tokens again. Um, maybe Tomb Guardian moves here, or it could stay here and just take the damage and continue to guard. That's also cool. I can re I, I can force entry it over here and then move and attack it with the Tomb Guardian. It has seven health, fairly good odds of it dying soon. Let's do that. Try to kill it. Not taking damage on my creature as well, which is nice. Dealing one. Okay. Well, can't win them all. And say end of actions phase. And he does gain control over this orb. Right. Again, he doesn't really have to do the attack, just add the orb thing. Yep. Cool. And at the end of the round, confusion added to a cheetah. Good. And three, two, one, end of the round. And in the deployment, I am not deploying anything. I'm saving my mana a bit here. Severe Forest Shadow comes out. Yeah, he's got he had 24 mana, so uh, it was time for a big, big creature like that. I'm and I immediately regretted putting down the confusion because I realized something big, bigger must be coming out, and the confusion would have been much better on Severe indeed. So yeah, that's sad. We might save up for the mind control then for for it, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, first quick cast phase. Let's see. Uh, four sentries, Cyanocobra, Cobra, nothing right now.
actions phase. All right. Um, I kind of want the fourth Vita fourth century down here. I will do it now. Vita fourth century here for a total of five uh, minus one. And then push this thing up there. Getting it away from the two vulnerable orbs. Done. No, 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 not done. Uh, we will have the Force Phoenix activate this orb here. Done. So now he's got three fast uh, elusive creatures. And I do want to dispel that elusiveness on one of his creatures at some point. But the the Pharaoh's Phoenix, theoretically, not super good anymore. So let's hope that I'm right about that. And then, yeah, hmm. it's kind of a weird game. Am I winning? I'm I'm only halfway to victory, so I would say no. No. When you attack, so I'll just hold that thought for when he does it. Here, when you attack. Confusion. It costs level, I believe, of monster. Creature's level, yeah. First, you roll for confusion. And then on a 7+, plus, he chooses randomly and can hit himself. So you get to hit orb. Yeah. That's fine. No. Can target self. All right. So that did not work. Unfortunate. Only it's only like what a twenty five percent chance because then first you had to go fifty fifty and then it's a fifty fifty again. So about twenty five percent. I know it's not exactly twenty five. But something like that. And there you go. And then he is quick casting. Alluring Orchid. Does that have range 2? No, it's range 1. Okay, so he, he's a casting it in here. Strange choice. Because I would go and attack it with my mage, I think. Uh, I would rather not get an, a rot on myself, I suppose. I could just leave the zone. I'm not sure if he knows that. Um... I'm thinking he can go and grab this orb. And I have a gremlin here. It can hit the Aluan Orchid then. I'll do that. Because it can't get rot tokens anyway. Dealing one damage. Okay, I was hoping for two. Done. We would not be able to attack the Vita in here anyway because of this alluring orchid. He says that was silly. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure I, I get it. It doesn't force an attack anymore. Yep. Okay, he didn't realize that it was the new version that we were playing with. All right. It's still a good card for three mana, yeah. But it used to be so much more powerful, of course. Mm 
The Beastmaster is acting, moving, and grabbing that orb over there. All right. Yeah. So we will push him closer to my mage and attack him with the mage here. And we should do it now before he moves and guards the mage, yeah. Oh, then the Darkfin S might hit me, but I will block that with the Symbiotic Orb. Uh, hmm, tricky. But yeah, I think that has to happen. Maybe we don't do it right now. The guard up here is annoying. This thing's gonna move down on guard, but then we uh, mm, then I could push that away. But I wanted to push the mage over and attack her, right? And he makes the Pharaoh's cheetah guard. Okay. We can attack into the guard and hope that the confusion triggers, but that seems silly. Oh, we want to take the control over the orb, of course, with the tomb guardians or the the. Uh, Sentry has to go on the Pharaoh Cheetah then. Interesting. Oh, and it can, on a counter strike, it might hit the alluring orchid. Interesting. Yeah, so I think we pass. Let's see. Uh, they, he could attack the Tomb Guardian with these creatures. So many ifs and buts. One, two, three, four, and I have one, two. So we should pass, I think. Let's pass once and see what happens. Darkfin Asp readies, oh, okay, and then unreadies, and then the Hound is going, but not going. It's going the other way. Double moving, can it double move? Yes, okay, yep. All right, then I'm more confident. Uh, the Darkfin Asp is kind of annoying, but you can just go with other creatures. It doesn't really matter. I will pass, though. The other big wood hound is activating indeed. And then I think it's two and two, right? Two for me, two for him, yeah. So I will push the Pharaoh's cheetah over here. And then go and grab that orb control off of him so that he doesn't get two Vitar. Done. We're both getting one again. But I am feeling like he's starting to take the control of the board, and that's nasty. I don't really know what to do about it. The Asp is moving. I did not expect the Asp move here. Okay, he could have waited for it with it, so that's good for me, I think. I could try to kill it, but no, we will go and hit the Pharaoh's Cheetah. Or do the Psionic Cobra. Oh, if I did Psionic Cobra, I would get one more Vita this turn. Yeah. That's what it's for. I think we gotta go for the, the gold here. Move, Psionic Copra. For three, yes, because we already used the ring. Pay one more to make it active. Then uh, Heart of Gravico will go and hit. Mm. His mage, hoping to for the slam, I think, here. Why not the Orchid? Why would I attack Orchid? <laughs> it's 
smiley face. Maybe he thinks I have to do it with the hammer. I was a done. Yep. I don't need to. All right, he turned the face down. It had two DMG. And he added it back. Good. Done with action faces. He re got it. Good. And then we will go and grab that orb. And I could guard with the Tomb Guardian for a prior for a dissipate token, but he's just gonna he's got plenty of creatures to attack through it, so I don't think so. Yeah. End of the round. He says nice, yeah, that's what it's for. Pretty much GG. Oh we've well, I'm at nine. I need fourteen, right? I think that's a little bit early to call it, but we'll see what he does. End of the round now. Oh, okay, so he is conceding. Um, oh well. I'm not sure I would win this, so that's unfortunate. Maybe Talisman next week? Maybe. So yeah, I, I hope you guys enjoyed this domination game. It's unfortunately not that unfor uh, un uh, irregular for people to give up in domination games when things seem dire. Uh, and yeah, I wish he wouldn't, but if he, he has to go and help his mom with some things. Alrighty. Uh, yeah, that happens. I still think it was a cool game. I demonstrated how we would use the Pelion Force Master to great effect here. I still think that with his build here, he can maybe, I, I, maybe I can steal one orb away from him every turn. I would give myself illusory leggings here and then I can like lesser teleport myself into this zone and double strike the Vita orb at some point in the round but he can overwhelm the board uh, because the game was so long with 14 points required he can get really close to um, what am I getting at he can get really close to to 14 as well here even though he only has what he has one right now and I might get one at least every other round from here on out. I'm going up to nine right now, so then I would need five more rounds. Let's say I get one every other round. That's ten rounds. Uh, and maybe I can do better than that with using some trickery and stuff, you know. But but I don't have... I was stretching for mana. So it's not a guaranteed, I would say. I would definitely not just give up here if I put him. But again, he had to go and do some things. It's fine. I hope you guys, as always, enjoyed it. Uh, and hopefully we can do some more domination games at a different time. See you all around. And Keychin signing off.